welcome to All About Boston. I'm Seth McCoy. We're starting a little late tonight, but that's okay. That does not mean we won't have time to talk to Representative Linda Dorsina Forey, who is running for state senator from the first Suffolk district. So why are you running? First of all, I want to, we should back up a little bit and talk about your just tremendous win a couple weeks ago. You went from thinking you were winning to losing to winning to losing and then winning. What was that like for you going through the whole process of back and forth? Well, first, Seth, I am so happy to be here with you, and I look forward to coming back on the show. Um, but, you know, we have an incredible team, and it has been very exciting. Mm -hmm. As you know, I've been a state rep for eight years, mm -hmm. represent the 12th Suffolk District, and so this opportunity to run for state senate was really... Um, just exciting, right? So we put an amazing team together. My constituents, the folks that I represented for a long time, came out and really made sure that we were successful on April 30th. But I got to tell you, we had people on the ground, right? So we had the raw numbers that were coming in because we had folks closing the polls. Mm -hmm. So we knew that we were ahead and we were actually the winners. So when it was reported um, the other way around, I felt horrible. You know, because everybody's campaign, everyone worked hard, right? right? Everyone has dedicated volunteers, family and friends who care about individual candidates. And to be able, you know, to be excited for one moment and then to be not or deflated, right. it's just a horrible thing to happen. Right. Um, but I'm grateful, you know, and I look forward to building relationships and really representing the whole First Suffolk District. And we should remind people that the uh, final is May 28th, That's so right. they still have to go out and vote. It's yes. very difficult, I think, for a lot of people to keep track of all these special elections. We should mention that you actually won in 2005 in a special yes, as well. Yes, I did. So I did. Specials the are your thing. Specials are my thing, except <laughs> the difference was the weather. Because okay? in 2005, there was snow up to my thighs. So that was, so was a little nicer this exactly. time around. But definitely Tuesday, May 28th, is the final election. And it's only my race that's on the ballot this time. Right. We know in April 30th, there was the U.S. Senate race as well. So this time, it's only the state Senate seat. So why should people vote for you? Why should people vote for me? Um, I say people should vote for me um, because I have had experience as a legislature for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked really hard on bringing resources and direct results to my community and my constituents. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I'm someone who's going to work hard, you know, and I'm here to represent everyone. And I understand if folks weren't with me, they were with Maureen or Nick, that's okay right. because I understand relationships. Mm -hmm. I, you know, came here straight from a meeting in South Boston. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to representing South Boston, all of Dorchester, to Mattapan and a little bit of High Park. Yeah. And, and the work just continues because the issues that impact my community impacts everyone, right? It's about education. It's mm -hmm. about job access. Mm -hmm. It's about opportunities. It's, it's about, um, you know, really um, building a stronger neighborhood, mm -hmm. making it better here in the city of Boston for families. And connecting everybody because I think that's something that people forget as well is that you might live in Dorchester or South Boston or, you know, other parts of the city and you don't think that you're connected, but we're all connected regardless because we're all part of the city of Boston. That's right. I'm happy you said that, Seth, because it is true. It's about coalition building. It's about mm -hmm. partnerships mm -hmm. because bottom line, we are the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. And I look at this and, and folks will say, oh, well, you're born and raised in Dorchester. Can you really represent us? Of course I can right. because I'm not afraid of going mm -hmm. to communities and working with other people. Right. Um, I represent an ethnically, culturally, economically diverse community now. Mm -hmm. And so we are one community, you know, one's mm -hmm. first Suffolk district. Right. And so I look forward really to bringing people to the table. That is my strength. Mm -hmm. You know, as the chair, current chair of community development and small business, I've worked really hard on strengthening legislation and statute mm -hmm. to help small businesses thrive. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about bringing people to the table. Folks that may not agree, you know, with Linda, you're going to be at the table. There'll be a little tension, but it's all right. right. We're going to work it out because I think that's how we get a good product. Absolutely. That's how we work, you know, to get a comprehensive approach on different mm -hmm. issues that we're going to tackle. What are you most proud of as a state rep that you've accomplished in your eight years? Wow, okay, very good. So there's many <laughs> things, okay, and I know we don't have a long time, but I got to say my small business stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, small business, you know, they're the economic backbone. I'm here in Massachusetts, but in the country. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you there's over 500,000 small businesses here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And as chair since 2009, went on a tour, a listening tour, and really listened directly to the issues. Mm -hmm. And what did I do with that? I could have just listened and moved on. No, right. we had action steps. I found three key pieces of legislation that alleviated the pressure on small businesses around health care, that really talked about overburdensome legislation, mm -hmm. um, regulations, and policies that were on the books that were strangling our small businesses businesses and really talked about access to capital mm -hmm. and so that's important right because small businesses are critical to our neighborhood absolutely what um, if you're elected as the senator 
What do you want to work on? What's your number one focus? I mean, number one focus, and there's many focuses, right? So it can't just be one priority, <laughs> right? Because I look at it as everything is connected. Right. So, right, job is critical, mm -hmm. right? Job access, job opportunity. Mm -hmm. Construction's taking place all over right. the city of Boston, all over Massachusetts. We want to make sure that there's access to mm -hmm. Massachusetts residents, to mm -hmm. Boston residents. We know folks are coming from Rhode Island, Maine, New Hampshire. Nothing wrong against those states, but, right. I mean, come on. <laughs> we have people here in our state that needs jobs. So we want to make sure we hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. That's why I was happy to team up with Senator Sonia Chang Diaz to do the jobs access bill. Mm -hmm. That's really looking at metrics, right? Looking at benchmarks and collecting data, mm -hmm. which is critical in terms right. of how do we move forward and doing things differently. Mm -hmm. um, so jobs is so important. The other piece is quality education, right? How do we make sure that every one of our schools are quality schools, quality and schools? And you're looking not only just at Boston, but also the entire Commonwealth. That's right. I mean, I've worked on the Commonwealth front, you know, for a long time, mm -hmm. um, but obviously representing my district as well. But really, it's about a Massachusetts issue, too. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, here in the city of Boston, we have some great schools, mm -hmm. but we know there are some others that need some help. Definitely. And we know that, um, you know, it's important also that the staffing and the teachers reflect mm -hmm. the city of Boston. I think that's critical. Yeah. Um, but there's so many issues from housing, working with early education and supporting mm -hmm. our children. As you know, I'm a mom of four, right? So education, early education is critical. I know that mm -hmm. um, just by reading from my children from an early age, my husband and I and my parents and everyone's involved, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And so how do we support the early educators, you know, in our right. Commonwealth that are doing amazing this work? This is teacher appreciation. Yes, it is teacher appreciation. Okay, very good. <laughs> Okay. And I also should mention, you mentioned that you're a mother of four, so Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday, so I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And Thank you. And the moms at home, uh, happy Mother's Day as well. We're running out of time, but I also know that we wanted to mention uh, Nick Collins's grandmother just passed away, oh, yeah, and I know we I know. want to send condolences. Yeah, condolences, to... definitely. I left the message yesterday because I heard about it last night, so okay. I did do condolences, I know. Absolutely. And again, we want to remind people to go out on May 28th to the polls, another uh, special election, but it's very important that you vote, uh, exercise your right. I want to thank you for being here. We'll have you back Absolutely. in the coming months. I want to thank everybody behind the scenes for putting together a great show and you at home for tuning in. We'll see you next time.